It's showtime. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the top five anticipated movies for fall, winter 2024. And this is a very special one because this is going to celebrate 10 years since I've been doing these group anticipated videos with all of my friends. Uh, it all started, I could tell you exactly, on September 14th of 2014. Because uh, I used to do anticipated videos solo, but then that is when it really started of me doing these videos with my friends. And I've had so much fun since then. So hopefully this will be a fun way to celebrate 10 years of these group anticipated videos. I am your host, 22 Tiger Dude, aka Pony here. And of course, I'm here with my lovely guest to celebrate celebrate this special occasion with me. Of course, the first person we are going to start off it with is Henry Yu. Morgan Freeman. We're finally in the burn months of 2024, and yeah, it looks like it's going to be another good season, so. Woo! Woo! Let's go! Next one up we got here is Violet. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yeah, um, this is, uh, it's fun. Thank you again as always for having me on, Tony. Really appreciate being here. These are genuinely like, like me and my favorite videos to make like in general. I'm so serious when I say that. Um, yeah, I've been doing these for what now? Nine years? Because the first one I did was fall, winter 2015, right? That was the first one I was in there, right? Okay, yeah, right? I believe so. Yeah, I think Crazy. you're correct. Crazy. It's been, it's been a little while. Uh, so yes, thank you for having me on. And I'm really excited for this one because I won't get into it too, too much now, but I've been saying to all of you in private for months that this was like gonna be the most challenging top five to ever make. And it, 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 is, it has been pretty challenging, but I have a top five that I'm pretty confident in. And so let's let's get into it very shortly. It's yeah. gonna be the sequel to Challengers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. definitely. And last we got here is Jordan Farrell. Hey, it's good to be back. And uh, it's very bizarre that we are near the end of the year. And uh, it's cool to be a part of, uh, you know, a very special occasion for Tony for 10 years of these top five video videos. And uh, another special occasion this week that I'll get into uh, at the end of this video. But, you know, Tony, I salute you. I'm going to crack a toast, and I'm just going to... What the fuck? Ah! <laughs> I'm going to clean myself up. <laughs> well, um, I have my water bowl right here, Jordan, um, but a toast to you. Your spill, spilled soda. Yeah. My water's over there. While Jordan is busy getting cleaned up, this is now the part where we are going to talk about our honorable mentions before we get into our top five. Oh, of course, and before we do get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss when I upload a video. And if you could please like this video as well, that would be very much appreciated. So, okay. My honorable mentions are... Um, nothing. I actually have no honorable mentions for the season, so I am going to go ahead and cut to Henry Ewing for his honorable mentions. Wow, what a great list! All right, I um, know I had so much. Um, yeah, it's I can't believe you got to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> My honorable mentions are. Heretic, I think that's how you pronounce it. This A24 horror movie with Hugh Grant. Y2K, My Old Ass, Smile 2, Wicked, Amelia Perez, Piece by Piece, The Substance, Wolves, A Different Man, A Real Pain, 
the wild robot, Megalopolis, Adora, and the one that just missed my list was Joker or Yoku. All right. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was beautiful. very professional. Very <laughs> professional. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay, so I do have honorable mentions, but I somehow forgot to write down the list of it. So we're going to go on the IMDb app together, everybody, right now. We're going to we're gonna read for the ones quickly that I know I'm looking Very forward. exciting. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to go back. I'm just going to release today for, the, for these ones. Okay, I, there is there is actually one that's probably the one I'm most looking forward to. So I'll mention that one, um, or two, actually, that kind of a tie a bunch in those in a second. So first, we got Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, looking forward to. Uh, the Substance, uh, I am very excited for that one. I've heard some crazy things about that one. Uh, the Wild Robot, that one was actually very close to making my top five. I cannot wait for that one. One that did not make my top five, surprisingly, I would like to apologize to my baby girl here, Harley Quinn, but Joker, Joker Fala Adu uh, did not make it. Did not make it. I'm very, very sorry, Harley. Um, but I am excited for it. I am excited. Uh, then Saturday Night, I wasn't looking forward to this movie until very recently because the reviews of this movie are really, really good. Um, and Saturday Night Live is a very is interesting show in terms of its history. So hopefully, hopefully it's pretty good. Um, the next one, I believe, is if I can find it, uh, Wicked. I'm actually going to add Wicked because this movie has taken absolutely forever to be made. Um, and so hopefully it is, it is good. Um, then Y2K, that one I'm definitely very, very excited for. Briggs Bear is an amazing film where we're finally getting a director follow up. Uh, and then the last one, I believe, is Baby Girl. Uh, this one I've heard about recently, and it sounds awesome. Um, and so I'm very, very excited for that. So those are those are the ones that, that we have. So yep, yeah. This is a combination of movies that I am looking forward to versus movies I'm more curious about. We got Legend of the White Dragon, which is Jason David Frank's last performance. Then we got Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Uh, fun fact, I let the juice loose in my mouth with the Fanta drink. Then we got Rebel Ridge, which I discovered a couple weeks ago. Um, gives me first blood vibes. So and it's from the director of Green Room. Killer's Game, Can't Get Wrong, Dave Batista. Kevin Smith's The 430 Movie. Transformers 1, um, I'm slowly warming up to it after hearing some uh, word of mouth of it. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be the, the Oscar winner of the season. And it's uh, Pharrell Williams' Piece by Piece. Terrifier 3. Megaopolis, I'm more like curious just to see it. It could be really compelling or a complete train wreck. I'm looking forward to the latter. Then we got White Bird. That's another movie I'm like, if it actually comes out, because of how many fucking delays it's got. Venom, The Last Dance. A Heretic. Let me my, my Hugh Grant. Gladiator 2. Wicked. Wicked. I'm looking forward to it because it'll be my first exposure to the musical. Because, uh, like most of us, we're too broke to go see the Broadway musical. Sonic the Hedgehog 3. You know, looking forward to seeing Maria. Uh, the less you know about Maria, the better. The homeboy, Robert Edgar's Nosferatu. The Witcher, Sirens of the Deep. Uh, the next Witcher animated movie. And here's a special one. I said I was going to mention this privately when we first watched the trailer, but this fall we're supposed to be getting a fan film called Halloween Night, and it's night as in K-N-I, you know, like night. And it's Michael Myers from the Halloween franchise going to Gotham City and fighting Batman. I'm not making this shit up. We found the trailer by accident, and now we're unintentionally looking forward to it. Uh, and yeah, that's my honorable mentions. Oh yeah, a uh, side note. Um, I know I mentioned this on uh, honorable mentions this summer, but look back, the anime film is getting a full release in the States. So look forward to that. Okay, everybody. Now that we got, uh, well, most of you got your honorable mentions out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our number five. The juice is loose. Oh, that's juicy. Oh, yeah. Very juicy. Okay, so my number five is actually going to be a documentary, and I happen to be wearing the shirt of it. This was not intentional at all. It's Super Slash Man, 
a Christopher Reeve story. Um, this is going to be one of those limited releases where it only plays for two nights. The first night is the 21st of September. I believe the other night is the 25th. And um, chances are I probably won't be able to see it in theaters, but I definitely want to see this documentary. I think Christopher Reeve is such an iconic and wonderful Superman. He's always been someone that I've always found to be so inspirational because he is someone that is well respected as this actor. And then he got into that unfortunate accident and that accident caused him to be paralyzed. And obviously it was a major turning point in his life. And now he became, and then he became an advocates for spinal cord injury research and treatment and the fact that he did all of that until of course he passed away i think that's just incredible definitely forever a hero and the trailer got me really emotional i was so emotional when i watched the trailer and i knew immediately that i wanted to go see this movie um, I would love to see it in theaters, but I know I most likely just can't, but I'll definitely be looking forward to watching it, uh, most likely from home, because it does look like a very emotional and very inspiring documentary, and, you know, like I said, Christopher Reeve is just forever a true hero in real life. Rest in peace to Christopher Reeve. You are the man. You will always be super to us, good sir. So that is my number five, Superman, a Christopher Reeve story. Super duper, man. All right. So I want to say one thing that I'm looking forward to. That's not a movie, but I'm looking forward to escaping from the Speak No Evil trailer because that has been everywhere. But my number five is Gladiator 2. The 24 years later sequel. I don't know why they couldn't have it next year for 25 years but it is what it is but i wasn't sure about this one when it was announced but the trailer does look pretty epic you know we got paul mescal pedro pascal joseph quinn and denzel doing their things and they got like a shark in the coliseum Definitely looks like it's going to be a spectacle for sure. Like Ridley Scott's been pretty polarizing, but definitely looks interesting. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. All righty. Uh, also, one more quick thing is, is uh, I forgot to mention the Pharrell Williams Lego film. Uh, that is definitely also an honorable mention for me. I totally forgot about that one. Alrighty, so number five. Alrighty, so um, this is really, really tough for me. Like, I'm still debating right now in my head if I want this to be number five or number four. Um, but I've been really, really thinking about it, and I, I think this is my number five. Um, my number five is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu. Yes, this is my number five. I am really, really looking forward to this film. Um, when this, when Robert Eggers was talking about like years and years ago. Um, wanting to make like a Nosferatu film of his own and like remake it and like reestablish it in his own like visual world and like sensibilities. Like I thought it would, I was like over the moon about that idea because like Robert Eggers, I'm a little hit and miss on filmography wise, but his sensibilities as a director and his like grandness, but also just like the, like the, 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 the way he captures horror, I knew with like a gothic kind of like, like thing, a gamble, like of Nosferatu, like a vampire kind of thing would be absolutely incredible. Um, and from the trailer, it, it looks fantastic. Um, and the cast also is one of the best casts we've had in a really, really long time. You know, um, you know, a lot of people are disappointed about, you know, Anna Taylor Joyner being in this, but I will say Lily Rose Depp, I think is a very good actress. And so I'm excited to see her in this. Um, also the cast is amazing. Like Nicholas Holt, I think is awesome. Anna Taylor Johnson, I'm warming up to actually recently. Of course, Will Skarsgård, I don't think I have to say too much about that. I uh, also got like Willem Dafoe and other people. Like the cast is really, really fantastic here. And just on the teaser, it just seems like it's like it's again like his own like grizzly sort of like just like grand like gothic kind of take, but still just like paying tribute to like 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 the inspiration that like Nosferatu gave to a filmmaker like Robert Eggers. Um, it's coming out on Christmas, which I'm very excited about. 
And uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. I'm definitely going to be seeing this like super, super soon. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's just crazy because like for the longest time, I thought this was going to be like maybe like my number two or something like that or number three. Uh, but it, that, there's just so much coming out. And that that's just a testament to how much I'm looking forward to films uh, this upcoming fall and uh, early winter. So so to start is my number five. So yeah. Uh, just let you know that my top five uh, yeah, are, are animated movies. Um, not because, oh, I'm only looking for damn movies. It's just, it was, uh, not, not much to go for. Uh, but mainly because this fall is also the negotiations for the animation guild. So I'm mainly using this top five as an agenda to promote the hard work that these people are, have put together and are being taken advantage by corporate greed. My number five is, uh, Chris Sanders, The Wild Robot, the next film by Chris Sanders. Um, it just, uh, it's weird. I, every trailer that has come out for it, I've been, uh, it's always like, I'm always working up the waterworks, and it's like emotional, it's visually stunning. I love the, the painting texture it's going for, a heartfelt and surprisingly little mature storytelling. And it's another work from Chris Sanders. And what I'm really liking in the marketing is the fact that they're marketing him. You know, they're not marketing the celebrities. They're not marketing, you know, the pop coach references or the songs. They're marketing the filmmaker of this movie. And that is really, really special for, to, for me. And to me, uh, uh, because uh, not a lot of animated movies tend to make the director the superstar in their marketing. And uh, you know, fingers crossed that it's, you know, lives up to the hype. But yeah, that's my number five. Okay, everybody. Now we're going to go ahead and get into our number four. The juice is loose. And my number four just showed up on screen right now, Beetlejuice, <laughs> Beetlejuice. This is interesting, actually, because for the longest time, I wasn't really looking forward to this movie. I like Beetlejuice. I think the original is creative and fun and wacky. And, of course, Michael Keane's performance is iconic. But when the teaser trailer dropped for this movie, I honestly felt nothing. And then the other trailer dropped, and I wasn't really all that on board for it. But it wasn't until the final trailer dropped that I'm like, okay, I'm actually finally warming up to this sequel. It took the final trailer to do it, but I actually think it looks fun. And I do think it looks like it could be just as much fun, if not maybe even a little more fun than the original. And the fact that Tim Burton... Um, obviously, is back to do this too is really awesome. And even though I don't think Tim Burton's work has been really that strong for the past decade, he's always still going to be someone I'm looking forward to regardless because he's just such a wonderful talent, just a true visionary. So I really am pulling for this one to be good because I do admire Tim Burton a lot. And I love that he's sticking to practical effects for what i understand there's pretty much gonna be no cgi maybe there'll be a tad maybe we'll see but at least for what i heard there's gonna be little to no cgi in this it's pretty much gonna be practical which is very exciting and based on the marketing i already think it looks really great on a practical standpoint and it does make me just truly miss when these movies used to be more practical because movies now these days, they don't go practical that often. It really is very rare in this day and age. So to get something like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which celebrates that, I think is absolutely amazing. We got Winona Ryder back in here, which I'm very excited about. I'm also excited to see Catherine O'Hara return to the role, of the role. And of course, Michael Keaton back as... Beetlejuice is awesome. Uh, he literally looks the exact same as he did in the 1988 film. And, of course, you got newcomer Jenna Ortega, who has definitely been 
rising and rising, especially ever since Wednesday, uh, which is a good show. I enjoy Wednesday. So I'm looking forward to her teaming up with Tim Burton again to do Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I just like the environment. It looks creative and weird. And I think there's just a lot of potential here. So that is why Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is my number four. All right, my number four is Saturday night. When I was about nine or 10, I started watching Saturday Night Live. And this was when like Andy Samberg and Bill Hader were on the show. And I I was hooked on that. And I started watching like some of the older stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely very excited to see this one that talks about how chaotic making the premiere episode was. I, I know Jason Reitman has been pretty hit or miss, but I have been hearing this one is definitely a hit. So, yeah, I like the cast a lot. You got Gabriel LaBelle, Rachel Sennett, Cooper Hoffman, J.K. Simmons, and Willem Dafoe. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting stuff, and it comes out 49 years a day, not 50, because this, this year's a Friday, So, but it is season 50 of SNL, so it's exciting. Alrighty, alrighty, so my number four is one that is actually pretty new to my list, but, like, the more and more I hear about this one, the more and more I get it really, like, really excited for this one and that is the good knows queer uh i believe this one is coming out this year it does not have a release date yet but it is still set to release this year uh because like daniel craig's like a pretty big front runner right now i'm hearing so like i'm assuming it's coming out this year uh so i'm gonna include it um this one prime thing that we've heard about it sounds absolutely incredible um, and it's interesting because, like, Luca Guadagnino, I haven't seen stuff like Suspiria and stuff like that. I haven't even seen Challengers, which is absolutely insane to see that film. Uh, but I've, I've seen, like, uh, you know, Call Me By Your Name. I did see Bones and all, you know, stuff like that. And there's a lot about them I admire, but there's a lot also about them that I, I, I feel, like, challenged with and I can't feel like get into it. But, like, everything I've read about this one and how I feel like it's going to incorporate that, like, extreme melancholy that he's so good, in my opinion, at capturing... Um, with like his set abilities, but also like like his very like overwhelming like like moments. I really feel like with this type of like setting and story and the premise of this film, and and just like just celebrating, but also just like like acknowledging the devastating impact of the like, queer awakening or like being like in an environment like that, um, you know. And it's just like like the, the, like the freedom of it, but also like the, like the repression of it. Like, there's a lot of complexity clear that's going to be happening from what we've read about this uh, film so far, and I cannot wait. Um, I I think it sounds fantastic. I love Daniel Craig. I think Daniel Craig is one of the best actors. Like honestly, working today, I honestly feel that way. I hope I I hope that that I I can see it before the year is over. Uh, I picked up A24, so hopefully A24, release it wide before the end of the year. Please, please. Listen, my number four is an anime film called The Colors Within. It's um, from the director of A Silent Voice, and uh, it's from the studio, Science Sorrow, the studio behind uh, a bunch of movies I like, Night of Shore, Walk on Girl, Lou Over the Wall, and... Uh, you know, they recently did Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. And you know, it just looks gorgeous. And I like it's a slice of life, you know, coming of age story. And uh, there's a bit of the Catholic uh, phonology with the characters as well. And I just, it just looks gorgeous. You know, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, everybody. Well, now let's get into our number three The Juice is Loose. So, my number three is going to be for James Mangold's A Complete Unknown. I actually just finally watched the teaser trailer um, not too long ago, actually, because it kind of hit me that I hadn't seen the trailer when it dropped. So, I was like, okay, let me see how this looks before I, you know, make this video. And I'm glad I watched the teaser because... It uh, completely sold me on this biopic on Bob Dylan. 
I have listened to Bob Dylan's songs, and I think he's a very talented artist. I'm not going to pretend that I have super high knowledge of him because I definitely don't. I really don't know anything about his life. So I am looking forward to seeing this movie just explore his life. And I think Timothy Chalamet, he really looks like he's capturing the essence of Bob Dylan so well. Like already just like he he looks like he just really fits into the role. So I'm already very impressed with Timothy Chalamet. And of course, you got Elf Fanning in here, who I also think is very talented. Edward Norton is also in here. And of course, you got James Mangold, who is just truly one of the most underappreciated directors working in Hollywood. Like, it's crazy how many movies this guy has made, and still no one really brings up his name. And I feel like he is someone that deserves to get his name brought up when it comes to directors that are working in this industry. Because, you know, obviously he, he's d directed stuff like, obviously, Logan, there's a Wolverine, there's a Walk the Line. Walk the Line is so freaking great. So obviously it's not his first time delving into the music, the biopic genre either. So we know if he did great with Walk the Line, chances are he could do the same with a complete unknown here. I just can't wait to see how he'll bring the story to life. I can't wait to see how it all comes together. I hope it's a good movie. Hopefully it's not disappointing. And that is why a complete unknown is my number three. All right. Well, my number three is also a complete unknown. I really like the trailer for this. I think Timothy Chalamet is a fantastic actor and Excited to see his take on Bob Dylan, and also Edward Norton, Elle Fanning, and Monica Barbaro are in this as well. And I think they're great. So yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a big Oscar contender. I still need to see Walk the Line, but I think James Mangold is a good director to do this kind of movie. So yeah. Alrighty, wow, why don't you look at this? My number three is also a complete unknown. Now, um, this is probably not surprising oh, wow. for people. I know, this is probably not surprising for people Crazy. because let's talk about Bob Dylan quickly. First things first is uh, Bob Dylan is one of my very favorite artists of all time. I've seen him live two times. But specifically, I wanna focus on why this film specifically I'm so looking forward to. So from what I believe I've read about this film is it's going to take place like when he first when he was like around 19 years old and he was in New York City and stuff like that. And he met, and he met, and he met Pete Seeger, who Edward Norton is playing and stuff like that. And of course, we have like the self-titled Bob Dylan, which is like a cover of this album right here, The Free Will and Bob Dylan. This album is absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. And this one is important to note because the times are changing. It was like it was like a take on folk music, but it was like it was like going like deeper than I feel folk had ever gone before. And there was a lot clearly of like like spoken words of inspiration and the like country inspiration and stuff like that. But like just like the voice and the spirit that Bob Dylan had was unlike anything that like really had been around, especially in the '60s, in my opinion. And that album is very intimate and like beautiful in a lot of ways. But specifically, what this film is really really going to tackle is the transition from that era of intimacy to stuff like the electric era, because this film is leading up to the Newport Festival performance in 1965, uh, where these two albums right here are really important to talk about. Specifically, I will say this, I'm bringing it all, uh, bring all back home because like a Rolling Stone, it did come up before that and it was before live, but that's kind of a more complicated conversation to have. The first side of this is, an, is like an electric folk album. And so what, what Bob Dylan did after his first three albums is he went uh, like electric, if, if people don't really uh, know the whole story, is that he got like a full band because most of his music before was like his guitar and harmonica and vocals and he got a full band and basically made like electric rock and roll like folk kind of music and stuff like that and he does that on the first side of this and the last side is like again like the intimacy like acoustic -y kind of stuff but then he really really went fully into and have a section revisited later on like the next year in 66 uh but like a rolling stone everybody everybody knows that song but that song came out a phase before the newport uh, uh festival performance of 1965 and that's what this film is like leading up to the thing about that whole transition and especially with like that festival performance is like how much it changed music like forever bob dylan obviously he's one of the most famous musicians of all time and not enough people nowadays like around like i mean our generation fully realize how much he changed music in that era and this film is going to follow the progression of that um, and like the beauty of his artistic expression and stuff like that. And 
I, I, I cannot wait. I've been waiting for this film for years and years now. He was supposed to make this James Mangold before Indiana Jones 5, uh, but then he got that actually offered to him, and so he made it, and that film was horrible. Uh, so I'm glad that we finally have this film coming out now, because like Tony said, James Mangold is a great director. I didn't like Indiana Jones 5 like at all, to be fully honest, uh, but Logan is absolutely incredible. Ford v. Ferrari is a very underrated movie, in my opinion. Yes. I haven't seen what yeah, I haven't seen Walk the Line, actually, which I'm surprised by because, you know, Johnny Cash is, is also, like, a very important figure. Like, it's actually very, very, like, seamless going from Johnny Cash to Bob Dylan. Uh, that's actually, like, a very seamless, like, transition, like, truly like, revolutionary, like, artists who, like, transcended their genres. The one thing I will say is I'm a big fan of Snoopy Chalamet. I feel like for any actor that, like, Bob Dylan's a very challenging person to perform as because... His his personality is there, there. There's so much about him that's like a mystery, but so much that's like so just like unique and powerful for him. And it's gonna be very interesting, like 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 to see him take it on. But he's been preparing for this role for years and years now. His singing voice actually does sound very very good. It's more so the talking voice. I'm interested in hearing how that sounds because the mannerisms and like you know like the certain like aesthetics of the voice and so like then how like the personality and little quirks and traits. I love the creative team behind this film. I really like the casting. Obviously, Elle Fanning is also going to be in this, and of course we have like you know Edward Norton and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and so I am really excited that it's coming out uh, this year because I wasn't sure when it was going to come out, how it's going to be next year, but it's coming out this year for Christmas uh, and I will be seeing this as soon as I can. Um, and so shout out to Bob Dylan and a complete unknown. Uh, I cannot wait. And so that is my number three. So yeah. Also, I figured I mentioned 310 of Yuma. That's another really good one by James Mangold. Just want to I shout out to 310 of Yuma. I got to say that one. All right, I might change my accent for my number three spot. Sorry for all my British family out there who are probably going to murder me after this. But my number three is Wallace and Gromit, Vengeance and the All right, I'm going to stop this accent. Uh, I'm so excited that after nearly 20 years, we're finally getting a new Wallace and Gromit movie. The only thing that sucks is that it's not going to be in theaters. Uh, it's going to be dumped on Netflix, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, not just the fact it's a new Wallace and Gromit movie, but the fact that it's a semi-direct sequel to uh, The Wrong Trousers because of the, the bat penguin villain coming back. Uh, which, you know, in our heart, including Violet, penguins are not villains. They're just misunderstood people. Exactly. But on the other hand, fuck this penguin. <laughs> yeah. But, but no, I'm happy that it's a callback to one of my personal favorites of the Wallace and Gromit lore. And, you know, just I'm just happy to see new Wallace and Gromit stuff because we haven't had a new Wallace and Gromit movie, you know, short film featuring length since 2008. That's how long it's been since we had Wallace and Gromit. And this is technically the uh, Grandeo, Run Trousers. Um, Close Shave, Curse of Rare Rabbit, Matter of Orphan Death. This is the sixth film in the Wallace and Gromit series. And it's it's so amazing how, how they've become essentially the, the pop culture icons of of the British culture. Ardman is essentially the the Disney to the for the UK. And it's really, really nice to see them get work, even though they've been treated very poorly by this country's uh, film industry. So yeah, that's my that's my number three. All righty, folks. Now we're gonna get into our number two. The juice is loose. So, my number two is actually going to be the A twenty four film. We live in time with Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh. Man, I can't believe Spider-Man is cheating on Gwen Stacy with Yelena from Black Widow. Huh, very, very interesting. Uh, but <laughs> joking aside, I know, what a cheater. Cheater Peter Parker. That's why you can't but, trust people. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I saw, I saw the trailer and I was absolutely moved by it. I was like, wow, this movie looks honestly really beautiful. It tells a story of these two people that obviously they meet each other. And for what it looks like, we're going to see like a decade worth of the romance 
therefore the title we live in time because we are living in their time we're seeing the life that they spend together and it looks like it's going to be both a beautiful but also a very sad movie at the same time and uh yeah i just think it looks like a very wonderfully told movie and this is from director john crawley and admittedly i have been a fan of his movies i didn't really like brooklyn and the goldfinch which i was actually very excited for really really disappointed me my heart sank when i watched the goldfinch because i really was so pumped for that one so I hope this could be the first John Crawley movie to win me over because I do see a lot of potential here. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of A24, this does look like a very promising movie for the studio. So I really hope it goes well for them as well. I do think Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh working together is awesome. And their chemistry looks spectacular in the movie. So for all those reasons, that's why we live in time is my number two. I'm really looking forward to this one. In Time, starring Amanda Seyfried and Justin Timberlake. Definitely the Oh my god. Movie. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah def, definitely the sequel to that one, for yeah. sure. Alright. My number two has a name so nice, I'm gonna say it twice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. There's been rumors hey. of this sequel before I was even born because the movie came out 12 years before I was born and now I'm 24 and the sequel's finally coming out but yeah I grew up with the original I've seen them I don't even know how many times I've seen it but yeah glad to see Tim Burton Michael Keaton Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara coming back there's some people who aren't coming back but yeah, but we do have Jenna Ortega and Willem Dafoe, so I think this is going to be a very good sequel to the original, and the fact that they are using practical effects is awesome. Bring that back, please. Alrighty, also, I don't know how, I totally forgot about the Wallace and Gromit, like, Netflix home. I forgot about that somehow, that is Definitely an honorable mention. I totally forgot about the one, but but thank you for letting me know. I don't know how I forgot that. Um, all right, so here we go, everybody. Top two time. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a very interesting uh, top two. Uh, I'll explain why. I'll explain why in my number one. Uh, my number two is Terrifier Three. Uh, yes, this is to the shock of literally nobody and their mother. Um, so. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna talk with the first Terrifier and All Hallows Eve. Like All Hallows Eve and the first Terrifier. Like, like there's things I appreciate, but like I let's focus on Terrifier too. Um, I have the little Japanese little poster flyer. I I don't know how to work there. There we go. Right there in my bedroom. I have a little Art the Clown plushie right there. Shout out to Art the Clown. I have a I have like a bunch of Terrifier stuff. Uh, Terrifier two is one of my favorite. Clearly, she time. hates Terrifier two. Yes, I absolutely hate Terrifier 2. It's not like it's one of my... I, it's not like Burn I saw the VHS. It, yes, it's not like I saw it three times in theaters, <laughs> and I'm about to see it a fourth time before the third one, you know? Like, like y'all, like, everybody here knows this. I am obsessed with Terrifier 2. I think that film is absolutely incredible. Um, Same here. And it's, it's interesting because, like, I've talked about it many times before, but those films aren't usually my kind of films. Uh, but I guess scary clowns do the magic, I guess, for some reason with me, and, and horror. To get in the middle of a serious, like, with Terrifier 2 specifically, I felt sorry with the first one when I first watched it, but especially the second one, I have never seen. And maybe that's just because I haven't really watched many films like this. I'm sure there's crazier stuff out there and exploitation and stuff like that. But, like, I have never seen captured so well in the craftsmanship something so horrifically just like deranged i feel like these movies transcend the genre of horror i really really feel so because they take a lot of sensibilities of exploitation films and like and like really intense like gore fests and stuff like that but like but like establish them with like a level of love and care that like specifically has the aesthetics of like 80s kind of 70s kind of horror uh, like more like mainstream it's a combination of so many things in terms of horror, and it's absolutely brilliant in my opinion. And so the third one, I don't know really much about the plot, admittedly, uh, like because I'm only I've only watched each trailer like one or two times. I, I try to try my best to just kind of like focus on like visually and stuff like that, and, and like not try to comprehend the plot too much because I want to go into this like as blind as I can. But like I didn't, I really like I really want to watch those trailers. But like from what I'm getting, obviously Christmas and like 
everybody knows me, like Chris, like, yeah, like this movie is a violent movie. But specifically what I think is going to be so like really, really haunting about it. It's going to be an examination on trauma and like the deepest, like darkest, like most like brutal kind of trauma you can have while taking place during the most like jolly, wonderful time of the year. It, there's going to be crazy B-movie level dialogue and set pieces, I'm sure as usual with Damien Leone. There is such a sensibility to his work that I, I really feel like people don't recognize enough. There's a level of sensitivity to the characters that goes even deeper and beyond what the second one did. Um, and we're going even crazier with the blood and the violence, of course. Sienna, Lauren Rivera, I love that woman in the character. Like, I I'm, I love her. And, like, you know, like, Jonathan's coming back also. Uh, you know, like, uh, Sienna's a little brother in the film. It's like that. And, like, just, I, I cannot wait to see how all of it just, like, it, it just is. And, like, the first one is also being tied in more in this one, which is going to be awesome. I'm just being a gushy little nerd right now, I guess, over freaking uh, murderous clowns, I guess. I'm seeing the second and the third one, back to back in theaters. Cannot wait. So, yay! Uh, I'm going to piggyback what Violet said about Terrifier about the Terrifier franchise. A 80s, 70s feel isn't talking about, oh, it has to take place in the 80s and 70s in order to get that 80s, 70s feeling. It's taking the flavor of the filmmaking of the, that time era, the way it's paced, uh, the way it's written, and bringing it into a modern day setting while completely not making it too modern day. And that's what I, I loved about Terrifier 1 and especially Terrifier 2. Not copying it, more like elevating that feeling of nostalgia. Oh, um, that. For my number two, it's a movie that has had quite the journey similar to what the protagonist from Terrifier 2 went through. It takes a movie named after a fucking hot dog uh, capsule, Ketchup Entertainment, to bring us the day the earth blew up a Looney Tunes movie. And I'm going to say it right now. For all the people who talk about they want 2D animated movies in theaters, not just anime because we got that covered, I mean, traditional hand-drawn 2D animation, you know, made in-house in Europe, in America. You know, you guys better fucking practice what you preach. I better see your asses at the theater for the day the earth blew up. Because Disney is most likely paying attention to that movie and seeing how it does. Um, this will be our first traditional, regular Looney Tunes movie we've ever gotten in theaters. The last ones we got are were just live action hybrids with a celebrity attached to it. This one, not so much. It's not just important for the future of Looney Tunes. It's the future for animation, the future of cutie animation in, in the theatrical space. Here's the thing. For all of you people, including me, who want Coyote versus Acme, hashtag say Coyote versus Acme, hashtag say Fat Girl, hashtag say Scoop Holiday Haunt, you better vote with your wallet to support the day the earth blew up. Because if that movie does well, maybe, just maybe, that will get Warner Brothers to change their minds to finally release a finished movie, you know? Which, uh, I have a hot take. If you already finished making your movie, just fucking release it, okay? Yes. You know, it's weird to say it's a hot take. I'm loving what what's going for the animation style it's very fluid smooth and you know it's also cool to see a, a looney tunes movie that bugs Bunny's not the main character of you know we got daffy and porky pig you know porky pig who is you know fun fact the og star of looney tunes before bugs Bunny came in and stole the show i'm a fan of the director pete brown Griff, personally not because i've had i was in the same room with him i had interactions with him through pitch meetings and stuff from having those interactions, he is a genuine fan of Looney Tunes. That's my number two. Please, for the love of God, support this movie. Support this movie. I keep hearing people say they want to the animation in theaters. You better practice what you preach here. Well, I'm giving you a nogi. Sleeping with your wife. Wow. <laughs> um, on that note, yes. let's get to our number one, shall we? The juice is loose. <laughs> Something about number one, the juice is loose, is so bad. 
I know it's incredible. <laughs> and uh, now for my number one most anticipated movie for the fall winter season, as well as the rest of 2024, I am going to give it to the Wild Robots. Ever since I saw the first trailer where they played What a Wonderful World, and it's the movie's cover of that song, I was just like in awe. Like, that trailer honestly almost puts me to tears. And I do like the um, recent trailer that dropped, but that full trailer is, re- that first uh, trailer is really, truly what got me very excited for the wild robot. The animation looks absolutely stunning. I think it's uh, some of the most stunning just visual work I've seen for DreamWorks. The character designs look even unique for DreamWorks uh, as well. The environment is just really beautiful to look at. And of course, you got uh, someone that, you know, I mentioned how James Mangold is a name that's not really named in Hollywood just earlier. And I think that same thing goes to Chris Sanders. Chris Sanders has made just truly wonderful work with Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon. Um, He made The Croods as well. Um, And even his live action uh, attempt with Call the Wild, I didn't think that was bad either. I actually uh, enjoyed Call the Wild. He's a very talented director, and I admire the guy so much. This guy deserves all the recognition that he can get. It's a movie that looks like it's going to be very beautiful. It looks like it's going to get me in the feels as well, because I definitely very much get that from watching the trailer. I forgot to mention the voice cast, which I couldn't believe, but I have to mention that I love the voice cast for the Wild Robot as well. We got Lupita Nyong'o, Pedro Pascal, Bill Nye, Stephanie Su, Ving Rains, Mark Hamill, Catherine O'Hara, and another movie for September. That's really cool that she has Beale Juice, Beale Juice, and the Wild Robot in the same month. Everyone in this ensemble looks like they're going to get very impressive voice performances, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the voice cast will do in this movie. In my opinion, unfortunately, I don't think animation for 2024 has looked very strong, in my humble opinion. Um, It hasn't been very interesting this year and that makes me sad because i do love animation so it is one of the few animated movies from this year that i am looking forward to but with all that being said um i hope it'll deliver so that is why the wild robot is my most anticipated for fall winter 2024 as well as the rest of 2024 uh, before I say my number one, I want to give a shout out to Mel Gibson's Flight Risk, starring Mark Wahlberg, which is definitely a movie that is coming out. <laughs> All right. All right. Now for my number one. This is definitely a very fitting Christmas movie, and that is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu. I have really enjoyed Robert Eggers' filmography up to this point. Like, The Witch is really scary and The Lighthouse as well. And The Northman seeing that on the big screen was epic and now he's doing remaking the classic, which he's been talking about doing for a while and finally getting it and the trailer looks great, obviously, and I think that the cast is going to be great. We got Bill Skarsgård, Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, just to name a few, and Willem Dafoe in his third appearance in my top five for this season. So that man's having a good hey. rest of the- Yeah, my birthday twin, too. So, yeah, that's definitely going to be... A very scary way for people who spend their Christmas that way. Alrighty, so here we go, everybody. Okay, so my number one, uh, when I say it, nobody, and again, and not even the mother, their father will be surprised by what this is. But here's the thing with this one. We do not know if this movie is actually going to come out or not, uh, because there is some unfortunate behind the scenes drama happening with it right now. But like, 
if this does come out, like I'm, I'm I still want to make it my number one because like I I have hope it's gonna come out still. Um, and that is the Untitled Charter Schultz uh, Able Test Day Weekend movie. We don't know if this movie is coming out because there was a report, and I believe in, I think it was The Hollywood Reporter about a month ago, that A24 isn't going to release this movie anymore and no other distributor wants to pick it up, apparently. Uh, so I don't know what's happening with this movie, but I have faith it's going to come out because The Weekend posted a photo of this movie on Instagram story like three weeks ago. So I have faith. I, I'm not going to say too, too much because I don't really know that much about this film. Thankfully, I've got to wait for most of the leaks, which is, which is great. But the things that I have, I do know about this film, I'm pretty, I'm pretty ready. Uh, I think it just, it being the weekend and, and able, you know, as, as people can see, if they've seen my videos, like, yeah, it, number one. Yeah. Um, this it will be my most anticipated film probably like ever, if it does get released, because the album that is accompanying this film, hopefully is most anticipated album like ever easily. Um, this man's music has saved my life. Uh, the idol, I was not crazy about, but I have a lot of faith that someone will be better in terms of like filmmaking, like, you know, kind of stuff, visual kind of stuff. Uh, Gustavo Schultz, I do really really like it comes at night i think is an incredible film waves i do need to rewatch immediately but i remember liking that film quite a bit uh also so i have a lot of faith and the cast is absolutely amazing uh because we also have jenna ortega is going to be in this and barry keoghan is going to be in it also if this does not release the terrifier free is definitely my number one and i guess to put something else in the top five i will put the wallace and grandma thing in there absolutely freaking lulu i don't know how i forgot about that so that's the list um, hopefully this comes out, uh, because I put this to my number one for the spring also, I remember, but the album is coming out in the next few weeks, apparently. Uh, I mean, it literally will. Uh, so, so yeah, so woohoo! Uh, all the previous lists, including mine, they've had their chance. Now it's time for real, real adults Now to have the fun. time. Yeah, it's time to put on our big boy, big girl pants on and watch the real movie that will truly save cinema and that is craven the mac daddy hunter yes 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 you know that movie <laughs> holy shit holy shit that's sonic the hedgehog about the murder craven the hunter oh fuck oh man oh man oh man Mufasa is about to take sonic the hedgehog 3 down oh no 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 oh man now sonic the hedgehog 3 is What's left now? My actual number one, and that is Lord of the Rings War of the Rohirrim. The first Middle Earth movie we've gotten in, in 10 years. It's wild. It's funny. When uh, The Hobbit Unexpected Journey came out, it, it was like nearly 10 years since uh, the last movie. And now, after that trilogy is done, we got another movie coming out after 10 years. It's very interesting that it's an anime movie. Um, we haven't had an anime movie got this wide of a promotion or re wide release since um, the 2000s. Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie, fuck I'm old, that, that also came out in 2004. Also distributed by Warner Brothers. The Middle Earth saga is very close and personal to me. When, I, when it comes to fantasy stories besides 80s and 90s fantasy movies like Dark Crystal and stuff, it's really the, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings Middle Earth saga that really emphasized my love for fantasy. While I never saw the original Lord of the Rings trilogy in theaters, I saw every single Hobbit movie in theaters every single year. Um, and it was such an event. And it's not just the movies that I feel attached to. It's Peter Jackson's story behind the scenes, the upbringing of getting these movies off the ground and his, his background to do other stuff. These are the few movies where the behind the scenes stories and the documentaries are so compelling, so emotional that sometimes I won't even watch the, the Lord of the Rings or Hobbit movies. I'll just watch the appendices behind the scenes docuseries. To see him semi come back for um, this movie as an executive producer, obviously, it's really cool. Uh, he's been wanting to pass the director's torch to somebody else for the longest time, The Hobbit, it was this close. Then Del Toro dropped out. But still, Peter Jackson finally got what he wanted. He's now passing the director's chair to someone else. The director of this movie, I'm not 100% familiar with his work. Other uh, than that, he's directed a couple seasons of the Ghost in the Shell TV an anime. Uh, he's directed Blade Runner, uh, Black Lotus. Either way, he's like not a huge name, but... Uh, 
I'm pretty sure after this movie, his name is going to be big. It's cool to see more lore added to it. And, you know, just seeing a, even though it's an anime, it's just seeing a 2D, possibly PG-13 animated movie in theaters again. And once again, I'll reiterate, if you want 2D anime movies, you want PG-13 or maybe R-rated animated movies, uh, please support this because making Twitter posts is not enough. Studios respond with uh, dollar signs and penny and, McD and McDonald's gift cards. It is so, so bizarre that I'm in my mid-20s now and the Middle Earth Saga is still continuing to this day. But yeah, that is my number one for not just this season, <clears throat> but the rest of the year. Okay, everybody. That was our top five most anticipated movies for fall winter 2024 thank you everyone so much for watching and of course thank you for celebrating 10 years of me doing these group anticipated videos 10 years really has flown by it's actually insane how fast 10 years really flies uh but the fact that i have had 10 years of doing this with my fellow friends i am very very grateful to have made it this far so yeah Thank you all for celebrating with me, and thank you to everyone for watching. Of course, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss when I upload a video. Be sure to leave that like, you know, to give me some of that extra tiger power to this channel. Comment what are the movies you're most excited for for this fall and winter season. And if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Letterboxd. You can follow me on Serialize. Uh, there's also uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And on that note, I'm going to give everyone their special outros, starting off with Henry Ewing. Thank you so much, Henry. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you all for watching. It's going to be a great rest of the year for movies. It's been good celebrating 10 years. I can't believe it's almost 2025. That's crazy. But Oh, yeah. Yeah. Been a great decade so far. Hopefully it continues. If you want to follow me, I am on Letterboxd and Serialize and Twitter and Instagram and so on and so forth. So, yeah. See you on next year. Thank you very much, uh, Violet, for joining this video. No, thank you for having me on. I very much appreciate it. I love doing these videos, like I said. And yeah, so that's the list, everybody. Yay. Uh, we're about to be halfway through this uh, this freaking decade. Yeah, it's crazy. So I'm very excited uh, to see all these films. And uh, I guess I'll see all of you again in good old January, hopefully. Uh, thank you for having me on, Tony. And uh, yeah, there are some, I guess, social media stuff, mainly my YouTube channel, uh, that I will be doing quite a bit of content uh, in the next few months. I'm looking forward to. So thank you all. Yay! Goodbye! And um, thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Did you fucking hit your elbow on something? <laughs> oh no, I I intentionally did that to goof off with you actually. Yeah. I, I knew that was intentional. <laughs> but uh yeah. thank you, Jordan Farrell. <laughs> I want to say thank you for letting me partake in a surprising 10-year anniversary of these top five lists. I did not know you were you were doing this series for that long, which is cool to be part of that uh, legacy now. You can follow me on my Twitter, at James J. Broke, and it's official. I should know because a VFX artist from Marvel Studios follows me there. I'm not, I'm not uh, flexing, but you can follow me on my YouTube channel where... I uploaded the Garfield parody skit that just now got 100 views. I uploaded a pilot episode for a potential web series called World Grand Pilot, which is surprisingly doing very well. This week is the five-year anniversary of my first feature film, Scooby-Doo The Backstage Rage. And it is very special, very special, because um, not just posting some 
uh, content throughout the week to celebrate five years. But it's also, in a way, symbolic because throughout those five to six years ago, that's how I met Tony. And here we are right now. In terms of upcoming projects, um, you can follow me on Letterboxd because I just posted uh, the Garfield skit and World Grand Show Off on Letterboxd. So you can log in, put your honest thoughts there. But yeah, that's my plugs. And I'm going to, yeah, drink again. <laughs> Are you going to spill over you again? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan, so you don't have to feel low on this. This is 22 Tiger Dude here with uh, Henry, Violet, and Jordan. And don't forget that I will always have... <laughs> Tiger Power! Tiger Power! <laughs> Fuck yes! <laughs> Happy 10 years, baby. Tony's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> gonna run in a towel right now. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs>